Rock On Brothers. It's uh, Scott Fitzgerald from Rock Vox recording and production, and we're doing this thing called What I Learned This Week. And it's really about uh, self-development and trying to reflect on the week and what you learned to make you uh, grow, to help you grow and be a better person and stuff, and maybe some fun and and ridiculousness in there as well because my guest or actually my co-host my co-anchor nay 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 j what'd you say it was nay j nay j hey nay j and um you'll see some of some of renee's artwork is is here in the studio too around which you can you can see when you come here but um so so we we really wanted to just get together and talk about what we learned this week individually we didn't really share until now what we're going to talk about so this is all really off the cuff so who, who wants to go first uh you want me to go I, first I, you go first all and right then I'll, I'll, I'll go first i'll make a fascinating comment <laughs> <laughs> scintillating comment so one of the one of the things that i learned today or this week is based around forgiveness and how forgiveness is one of those things that is easier said than done. Mm -hmm. It's the kind of thing where you can say, I forgive you, but what does that really mean when you say, I forgive you, mm -hmm. you know what? And, and seriously, what, like yeah. if you say, if I say, I forgive you, what, do, what do you think that that means to you? Well, so I had some pretty great parents growing up and we had obligatory apologies sometimes would and, and the idea of an apology <clears throat> is that uh, you really hear what someone says is upsetting them, and then you make a strong mental note of it so you don't do it again. And then it comes with an expression of of sincere, sorry, you know, a, a apology that and promise not, you know, not to try and do that again. We're not always perfect at that, but um, that's my understanding of what an apology is. And forgiveness on the other side of that is sort of trusting that the other person is not really intentionally trying to hurt you. Like the belief that uh, they meant they 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 you know they meant what they said, and they're and they're saying. I mean, if I'm saying I'm sorry, it means I'm not going to hold it against you in the future. And if someone said they're sorry, you know, they're, they, if we're looking for because clean we're not slate, clean slate. We're starting over. Clean it's slate. very hard to clean slate. Right. And very that's hard. And, and as much as you want to do that, sometimes it's, it's not that easy, especially if it's, if it's something that was, you know, let's say interpersonal relationship, right. it's going on over a long period of time. And, you know, a person treats you a certain way and then after a while you realize oh you know this was both we, we both were a problem in this sure. we both made our mistakes so we both realized we need to change we both change we forgive each other for those mistakes therefore now from this point on after the change you have to sort of take that default that that person is not that way anymore right although sometimes we say that we forgive the other person and we really our heart is in it and mean it like i'm i want to believe you and i want to uh trust that you're different and all those things but stuff can still come up and then you find oh shoot like i still have resentments or i still yeah. have anger and that's that's the and trick it can, with that it can and that's the problem is it can lie dormant for years yes. until there's a trigger and i don't like using that word at least because of the way it's sure. been used today but but there is a trigger and and you realize that it makes you get really introspective and you're like, yeah. wow, do I, I said I forgave you. I, I meant that I forgave you, but maybe I really didn't forgive you because this is really hard for me to get through. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> that's that's when people call it the work, right? That's, right. You got to do the work. the work. Yeah. You got to do the work. So and hard. and sometimes the work is ongoing. You yeah, have it to is do always ongoing. Yeah, you, ha you can't just be like, all right, we're done with that. Move on. That's what I thought. So right. so that's really to, to sum it up. I thought forgiveness was a one and done thing. We forgive mm. and we move on. And for some people that could be the case. But I think in most cases, forgiveness is 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 an ongoing sort of uh, evolving thing. Yeah. You I know, mean, it's a it's a trust. There's a trust piece associated with that yeah. right and so 
if you if someone says, I promise I won't do this again, and, and the other person says, okay, and I forgive you, and so I'm letting this go, then they do it again and right. again and again. How many times can you? Um, right. Yeah. There's, it's, a, it's a wound. We're, you know, we're, not, we're not great at this in our culture. These are, these are invisible wounds. They're pretty rough. Yeah. So yeah. are you sharing specifics on this, or are you staying abstract? Oh, no, abstract? no, very abstract. Okay. It's, it's, it was a lot of things. <laughs> no, no. No, just stay very, very abstract. <laughs> yeah, well, then we'll have to talk more about other types of yeah, forgiveness. And, uh, yeah. But no, that that, that was, it, it was something, it, you know, it was a conversation I had with someone and then it led me to, to really think more about it. And I also, you know how it is, how the universe does this to you when you're going through something and then you start noticing examples of that thing, whatever it is, elsewhere. Absolutely. You know, you catch an end of a TV show or a movie, and what do you know? That's what you're thinking about, and yeah. or you hear other people talking about, it, or someone you texts you and says, "Oh, you know, this happened," and you're like, "Wow, that's exactly right. what I'm that's going through." Up. So it's just sort of, you know, came together that way. Gotcha. Well, so can I uh, can I just say that uh, I, you know when you were. Can I jump into my thing? Is nope, there's a, not enough time. Okay, well, I'm jumping in. <laughs> I, uh, when you were saying at the beginning about how this is about stuff we learned this week, I was going to say my week has been a, a month. Uh, it, it's the it's, Well, it's the first one, so I it's know, up but until I, this week. Up until this week, exactly. So my, my week has been a month. It's been a, a really – it's been a month of weeks. <laughs> and um, and I this has been the week where I've had a lot of things break. Um on a material level and on a, and also on some personal level. And so y'all things broke. And so unlike Scott, I'm going to get specific here. Uh, in the month of August, I had a, uh, my air conditioning, my central air conditioning break. Uh, I had my, uh, car take a, take a, a dump, a, dump a dumper. <laughs> dump. That was the end of the car. Uh, and then the other day, just a couple of days ago, my computer, which is an 11 year old iMac, which is where I'm heading with this conversation, which is really is really old. That's a whole lot of uh, not enough butter over too much bread. <laughs> it's really old, <laughs> but that's where I'm going with this. Yes, is that all these things broke, and everyone was like, "Well, it happens in threes, so you're probably good now." Um, Mine happened in seven. <laughs> I was some gonna reason. say, <laughs> but then you know, there's some interpersonal things happening where it's like, well, I have to meditate on this, and that is one thing you and I do talk about is like the role of really like when when many things are falling apart or when things something's going wrong, you can just be on autopilot or you can make a decision to really sit with it a little bit and be like, why is this happening or what am I supposed to learn from all this that's happening all at the same time. And the fact that these big items broke, I mean, these big items broke, I really, it's really set me into a tailspin mm. because these are big items. It's very expensive. I'm 40K in the hole, you know, Yeah. I, on top of my normal uh, expenditures. And so I really had to think about it a little. And at first I, I was, it was sort of interesting. I've been charting my, the way my mind works. So at first uh, I had a deep feeling of overwhelm. And fear, mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, this is really expensive. This is really bad. Now I got to find the right people to fix the this, fi fix the that, whatever. So, so first it was this like overwhelm, and I, I went into like a research mode. And so, research for these kinds of things is really intense. Like, how do you, who's going to do my new AC? And by the way, the AC turned into a furnace repair as well. So, you know, this is be like a big thing. And so lots of research with that, lots of research with the car. Do I want the same car? Do I want a different car? Am I going to a different dealer? All that stuff. So just those kinds of things. And then I had to sort of gather my resources. Like I had to ask for some help. I've never bought a car by myself before. So I had to sort of ask some people. Like, it, what you know what? I don't like buying cars. Oh God, I don't like any of this. I don't like it, any of this. You want to buy a new AC? You want to Yeah, buy a well, car? I've had to do that too. I've had to buy a new AC, a new car, and a new computer in the last couple of years. I know. So I'm, I'm with you. So this I'm is a you. month of this and I so but I, I and I don't like any of it. None yeah. of it is fun and you really have to call in a lot of help from people. Yeah. So I was just sort of charting and all of that was sort of okay. And then you have to make the decision. Right? It's like 
who am I going with? Who am I deciding to trust? And what I found is I started to slide into this place of like, I don't make good decisions. <laughs> like I have a history of making poor decisions. Oh. And I really, I'm just saying this was yeah. my, this is my thought. And I'm like, right. I'm not good at this. This happened to me before. Right. So I ended up calling my sister-in-law who said some really reassuring things to me, which really kind of changed my trajectory. And she said, Renee, first of all, things break. Yeah. I, honestly, I hadn't considered that. Yeah. I, I really was like, this car should run until I'm ready to, <laughs> right, to right. be done with it at right. 450,000 miles. You right. know? <laughs> or this computer, which is 11 years old, as you stated, I was like, uh, this will run for me until right. I say I'm ready for a new right. computer. And same with the furnace which I and the AC, which I knew buying my house. When I bought it, they said, you know, so you're going to eventually need to replace these things. And I was like, oh, when I'm ready, wah, 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 really, when I'm ready. Yeah, and yeah. so I really had to have that reminder that I'm not all that in control and things will break. And I, and so it was huge when she said that. She also said, they just don't make things the way that they used to. Cars don't last for the way that they used washing to. Machines, right, washing machines, dishwashers. <laughs> Refrigerators. All, all these electronics, they just, they're not meant to last that long. And so these are the kinds of things that she said that gave me a really big pep talk where it was like, oh, okay, well, it's the end of the life cycle with these things. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. And then, though, I went into a secondary spiral of like, why do I let things go this long? <laughs> why? Why? When my son told me two years ago that the computer was at the end of its life cycle, why didn't I go, hmm? Why do I have to let things actually get to the point of absolute breakdown at the side of the road or the the spinning wheel of doom on the Mac or, you know, the air conditioning is out it's during the a way heat time wave. works. Time is at this point in our lives. Time is ridiculous. By the time we get done with this and you walk into the hallway, three months will have passed. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You know but I, mean? I also had this realization. There's a little bit and by a little bit, I mean a lot of avoidance. Oh, yeah. I don't because yeah, like you don't like to do it. So you don't. You, you push it off. I did. And I pushed it off to the point where then there's yeah. multiples of things yeah. that I don't want to do. So I really saw that this time. And I was like, you know what? The next, the next time somebody makes a recommendation to me of like, maybe it's time to consider this or your computer's at the end of its life cycle or like, I need to hear it differently and, and begin a, a, a process. You yeah. know, I need to begin a process. And I will also just say, not throwing my parents under the bus here, but I was also aware of the family dynamic here. My parents, God love them. They are the most wonderful people. Someday you may meet them and you'll be like, they're wonderful. They, they just don't update. Yeah. They just don't update. The house, it's 1962 in their house, yeah. which is like adorable and cute and they're very happy and it's like a sitcom, you know, setting. Yeah. But they really don't do it. And I realized I don't want to be like that. Like, I don't want to be nice like that. Floral print, uh, floral print Davenport. Right. And the, <laughs> the you know, yeah. And like the key, the bathroom where there's the. Chesterfield. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the what the hell is. Well, you know, like the very heavy curtains and that match the bedspread that match the carpet. Oh, yeah. Like very yeah. time. And yeah. there's a time piece to that. And anyway, I, I don't want to be like that. And so I saw it this time and I just thought. I need to do better. Like I really need to do better with this. And next time something, so so I already did it. Uh, oh, I kind of had to. But my plow company called this morning, and my plow company said we are no longer offering plow service. We are just going to focus on landscaping. Now that is something I would normally like to shunt aside. Sure. And be like I'll deal with that in December, you know. <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm gonna. I better deal with this now so that I can get on somebody's schedule. So I just thought, put it at the top of the list. I already called. And I guess all I was going to add on the interpersonal level, because that's all material, I kind of realized, much to my chagrin, that I hold on to people in the same way. Letting go. Well, after they're broken. <laughs> well, after a relationship is broken, oh. we're broken. And, and it really was a realization of like how I hold on to people. And I just don't like to make, I don't like to make updates there either. I just want things to stay. And I, I think people don't like change. And that many people are afraid of moving forward. Yeah. But when you try to stay, this is the lesson for me. This is my learning. But when you try to stay exactly where you are and you refuse to move forward, then you go backwards. You go backwards. It's a, yeah. it's a terrifying results. Exactly. The word for the day is mitigation. Yes. Mitigation. Yes. Mitigation. Can you spell that? Nope. Okay. Um, it's funny because 
this is all stuff that I had written down for me too. Um, we're in sync. Right. Simpatico. We're, we're, <laughs> Can you spell that? We're both <laughs> drowning in all kinds of drama. Um, what was it? Uh, two, three, three weeks ago. I had just like all of your stuff died. I had all of my stuff die. I kind of um, saw that on the book of faces that you, yeah, <laughs> you had mentioned. Like I was, I was sitting in that other room in the control room at the lowest point I've been in years, mentally and physically. I was like, why is this happening <laughs> yes. to me? Oh my gosh. I couldn't, I had one client come in and both times we couldn't get the, the, the project done. My, my computer was at, now I have a new computer. Mm. Thankfully I leased my computers and the lease was just coming up and it was just at the point the computer's like, I know you want to get rid of me. So I'm going to. Right. Right. Technical, so, technical oh, so I, that, um, a mixer board went down and then I had to ship it out for repair and FedEx messed up the, the shipping. So it got damaged. Mm. So that's hanging in limbo. And, uh, and I did also just get a, a new car, a new used car, not too long ago. Um, so when you get all these things, when all the things get back to normal then and you've reinstalled and you've and, and, then you get, and, then, great. and then do you have that though, that gratitude of like, oh. yeah. And that's the thing. It, it really made me thankful about when things work wonderfully. Yes. And so now I'm more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm more, I'm more mindful of every single day. Thing, when, things when things are, are going working. right, yes, you know yes. today today went really, you know, never, no day's ever perfect, but I'm like, today went really well. Yeah, thank you, thank you that all this stuff you know worked, and and maybe I'll amend that after I go and look at this and listen to this and see <laughs> if it actually did work yeah. because I'm not in the other room right now. I'm here, right? So there's no one in there pushing the buttons that should be, but th this all kind of happened at the same time just like it happened to you, but a few weeks ago. And my, my newfound dedication to meditating has really done amazing yeah. things. And I know yeah. Same. a Same. lot of people will, will get all scared at the whole, you know, the woo woo meditation stuff. And it, and it's not, it's not that big of a deal. It's not what people think. think that, it's not what people think. Like, what do you do to meditate? Well, I want to say what people think first. Okay. People think that you're supposed to clear your mind oh. and, like, not have oh. hear anything. Incense. Or you're supposed to connect with God or something. That yeah. is too much pressure. Yeah. It just means take a moment to get quiet and 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 just 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 be quiet. It's okay to listen to hear the trucks in the background. It's okay to hear the birds chirping. All that's fine. It just means take a moment to slow down and recenter yourself. Just give yourself a minute to, because we're all so good at saying, I can't do that right now. I'm so busy. I'm so, I don't have time for that. I don't, you know, 15 got, minutes, it, 15 minutes. To, so, so what I, one of my, I have many different ways of meditating, but I was going to say, let's just do it now. But I mean, <laughs> that would be probably boring for people, but, um, but it's just about, you know, I take a couple of breaths and just really take a breath, put breath in, hold my breath for a couple of seconds and then release it. And even just with a single breath, it's like, whew. And I really do sit with it and just I let whatever come in, come in. And I try to notice if I'm being hard on myself because I do tend to tend to yeah. be hard on myself. And I'm like, OK, you're being a little hard on yourself. And and then I can it's just it's just slowing it down, allowing myself to just take a break from it for a minute. And I think all the studies actually show that when you do that, when you come out of it, you have solutions, you know, you're calmer to make better decisions or it's whatever. True. So so I've been meditating a lot this month. It was like, you know. I, I learned more this month about HVAC, CPUs, horsepower, um, uh, dongles, you know, more than I ever wanted to know. And and But I had the space to do it because I was meditating. You know, I was like, I just got it before I researched this. Everybody likes a good dongle. A good dongle. You know, which dongle? And, and you know, anyway, you get my point. You yeah. know, is that like in order to, it, it doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're putting new information into your head, that is actually a real thing that's called like decision fatigue mm. to have to make all these complicated decisions. I mean, even you just mentioned you lease your computer. I'm like, oh, is that a thing? I can lease your computer. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and you know, that's another decision. Like, you have to yeah. research and all. And uh, I guess I'm just saying, like, we don't realize how much our brains are working. And um, so when you stop it for a second, just go, I'm just going to take a break. And sometimes I'll lie down on a couch or I, I do like to do it laying down, actually. And just I put one hand on my chest and one hand on my stomach. 
and I just take a couple of breaths and even fit, like you said, 10, 15 minutes and I can go, okay, I'm ready to, re- I'm ready to research Ram again. Yeah. You know? And it, you know, the thing about uh, meditation is that it's not something that you master right no. away. You, every time you do it, it's different. It's a practice. And, and, it, and it is a practice because I have, you know, I sit out there, I turn the light off, I put on this, uh, this little uh, Spotify music that I have. What's what's the matter? You got sorry. There's a bug. Is there flies? I got around? it. I sw- I killed it. It's attracted to your pizza I box. Think so. A, okay. Sorry. Um, you know, I, I I've got the nice music. It's it's you know just low, and I'm sitting there. Oh, and you I do start, it with music. I have music on the uh, slightly, and and then and, and or a, is it the music that goes like? Oh, <laughs> it is. It is actually my. My Spotify playlist, Peaceful Meditation. Okay, okay. So it's not like lyrics and AC. Right, okay, right. It's, it's, de- it's definitely atmospheric. Mm-hmm. Um, so so I'll sit there and I concentrate on my breathing. And I'll find after two minutes, I'm thinking about something. I'm working through something in my mind. And then I have to, no, no, no. Go back to thinking. Go oh, go back to breathing. Right. Go back to breathing. Just and feel then, that you're alive. Yeah. Just, and then my alarm goes off, and it's been 20 minutes. I'm like, what the heck just happened? Do you ever fall asleep? Like take a I, I have. Happy? Yeah. I have. It's it's important, I think, I actually. Have. It yeah, really... and if your body wants to fall asleep, then maybe you should. That's right. I'm with you. So it really is a reset. Yeah. And um, Just set an alarm to... so right. you don't, right, like, right, right. So you don't wake go. up three hours later and be like, oh, crap. <laughs> Seven hours later, <laughs> but um, but point being, that doesn't usually happen, and um, I do find that like I'm with like I'm with you on that that we our body is giving us messages all the time, and it's our job to pay attention to them, and we're not yeah. good at that in our culture. We just kind of keep going, going, going. But I I've learned to I've been meditating for a long time now, and it, it is easy for me to do it, and I forget sometimes when I'm working with clients um, how how difficult it is for them to to start, mm-hmm. um, but but. But even just a few minutes of it, people sort of feel at the end of it, they feel a little bit, um, they report feeling it just takes a little bit of the edge of the anxiety off. And so it's like, well, you know, you did that in three minutes. Imagine if you did it, how you'd feel in 10. So yeah. it's just a practice. It's a practice. Well, I guess that's it for today. Today's episode of What I Learned This Week. We're going to well, try to tell do you, this. Can I tell you one not so like... Uh, like one just lighthearted thing, leave you with our lighthearted oh, thing I learned this week. Yes, just for everybody, because you know how they have those memes on Facebook that say, like, I was this many years old before oh, I right. learned this. Okay, this is what I learned this week. And and I don't think I don't think I shared this with you. So I'm gonna ask it to you as a question. Imagine for a moment that you are stuck inside your car. In fact, it's so bad your 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 car is being submerged underwater. It's an emergent situation, and you need to get out of your car. And you're locked in. There's been a mechanical failure. You can't open the doors. How do you get out of your car? You break the window. How? Uh, and there's something that you have in the car that will allow you to break the window that I can't remember what it yes, is. Yes, try and think of it because that is the thing. I feel like this is a public service announcement. Is it, it's not the uh, it's not the seatbelt or something, is it? No, but you're close. Oh, oh, the headrest. It's the headrest. You take the headrest off and it's got those two metal prongs and you hold it and just <laughs> smash them right through. And apparently that it's designed for that, designed to break through Interesting. that glass. So just I thought tried, I'd let you know. I tried to take the headrest off of my car, uh, off of my seat, and I couldn't get it off. So I oh, think I would, have, I would have drowned. <laughs> that's a problem. Would, would you have, have to practice screwed. that too <laughs> with, along with your meditation. <laughs> After you meditate, practice getting the... Yes. So yeah, anyway. Survival well, tip you. 101. I will be, be back with more helpful hints next week. Yeah. So, so we're going to try to do this every Friday at, uh, what time do we say? For real? What time do we say? Yeah. 11. 11? Yeah. 11, Fridays at 11? 11 a.m. Okay. EST. EST or EDT. We're not back in standard time. Yet. Oh, EDT. <laughs> <laughs> so how can people find your artwork? Oh, thanks. People can find my artwork uh, on my website at... Uh, www.razjacobson.store. Here I have a song for it. I'm always making something. I'm an artist to the core. Raz Jacobson. Dot store. store. Exactly. Wow. But you can also find me on Facebook and Instagram at Raz Jacobson. Did you write that whole Selena and Barnes I, thing? I did. Or the or the comfort windows and doors thing? I did. Or the Bob Johnson Chevrolet me. thing? So my son said to me when I told, read, did this to him, he said, and when I when I sang it to him, he said, "You know, Mom, not everything needs a song." 
Somebody's grumpy. <laughs> and of course, you can find me at rockvox.com. Come in if you want to do your podcasting, uh, voiceover demo, audio books, audio production, video production, or if you just want to sit and chat. Thank you. <laughs> This is the best. We'll sitting be back. With chat is, we'll be sitting back. with Scott's the best. We'll be back next week with what I learned this week. And uh, we hope to see you there. Ciao, ciao.